So I bet you haven't seen this. You'll probably be as shocked as I was to see what people do to their houses. Now I'm gonna walk you through this house and I'm gonna point out the problems that you need to be made aware of when it comes to investing in real estate, especially a foreclosure. Now when it comes to buying a foreclosure, you can get an absolutely great buy on a house like the one I'm about to walk you through, but you always want to get a home inspection done on the property. And it's also not a bad idea to get a plumbing inspection where they inspect all the plumbing, pipes and components on the property, as well as an HVAC inspection. And listen, don't just rely on the inspector that your agent recommends. They're supposed to and should give you three recommendations for home inspectors, but still do your own research, do your own homework, and ask those home inspectors how many years they've been doing it, are they licensed, are they certified, and will they give you a full report after they've inspected the property. But look, even that said, it's still important to actually do your own due diligence and look around, if you will. There's nothing wrong with that. It's gonna be your house, you're gonna buy it. Now, obvious things are just like here. This is a little bit of wood rot. You can see that's an easy fix. It's just a column that can easily be fixed. But unfortunately, there's things that happen to a house that you don't really realize. Like when a gutter's clogged full of leaves, you don't know how long that gutter's been full of leaves. And when it's full of leaves, it holds water. When it holds water, the water wicks back up underneath the plywood decking that's underneath the shingles. As a result, you can get a whole entire rotted roof. Yeah, that happened to me, cost me 11 grand. But you know, that's the kind of stuff that you don't know or hear about. But rest assured, after you watch this, you'll know. So grab a pen and a piece of paper. You're gonna wanna write this down. So real quick, my name is Wayne Turner. For nearly 30 years, I've bought, flipped, built, sold thousands of houses. And I share this with you so you can know and have the comfort knowing that the information that I share with you is actually from real life experiences. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. I promise you, what you learn here will not disappoint. Now, most of the damage that people do to their house is not intentional. There's fires, floods, contaminated sheet rock, termite damage, wood rot, you name it. But unfortunately, all of that occurs and happens that's kind of out of the person's control, except for the maintenance. You have to maintain a property. You have to maintain if it gets termites and have termite contracts and all that stuff, right? But unfortunately, there's things that people do to a house that's quite shocking. Now, what I mean by shocking is not holes kicked in walls or broken windows or anything like that. It's not even the blue carpet like you can see in this house that's just blue, right? Or the god awful smell that from pets. I'm talking about the things that people do intentionally to their house because they just get mad, like pouring concrete down their drain. You see, people will take a bag of Quick Creek concrete that's dry, they'll pour it down their drain. They'll turn on the water and then it turns into concrete. And if the house is built on a slab of concrete like this home is here, it's gonna take tens of thousands of dollars to physically bust up the concrete slab foundation just to fix the plumbing. Now, when you buy a foreclosure, you'll notice it's kind of dark in here. There are no utilities on. The banks will not turn on the utilities, the electric, the water, the gas. You have to do that and you have to put the utilities in your name. Now, the good news is you can do that just for a short window typically at two weeks, but you do not want to have the property inspected without having those utilities on. Remember what I told you about the concrete in the drain? Yeah, you got to run water and you got to make sure that water flows through the system. You want to make sure that the plumbing inspection turns out okay. And if you don't have water, that's not going to happen. Now, maybe you've been through a foreclosure, perhaps you haven't. If you haven't, I'm walking through one now. And forgive me, it's kind of dark in some spots because once again, there's no utilities on on the property. But you may look at a property, a foreclosure like this, and your agent may even mention to you, well, the property's been winterized. And here's what I mean by winterized. They take the toilet, commodes, and all the plumbing. They pour solution down all of the plumbing pipes. I'll go somewhere where it's more light. They pour the solution down all the plumbing pipes. The solution that they put in the plumbing pipes is antifreeze, very similar to what you put in a vehicle. But here's what you have to know. If this house sat empty for two years, three years, and sometimes we see that before the bank actually takes possession of the property, because some people just move out. They'll leave their house, believe it or not. So if it's two to three years, you don't know how long or how many winters that plumbing has sat with water in it. Just because the bank winterizes it, don't take that as everything's gonna be okay. Have the utilities turned on, do a full and complete inspection, even a plumbing inspection, and make sure that there's no busted pipes, because busted pipes, big money.
Now, I've always said you'll get a great deal on a lot of these foreclosed houses, but you have to do your due diligence and you have to know what it's gonna cost you to make it habitable and, and fix the property up to your specifications. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to get in the attic. You're gonna look in the attic. You're looking for chewed up, destroyed ductwork, whether or not the HVAC looks new and clean. What about the water heater? Is it connected? Is it working? You're looking also for critters. Anything that's been up there, that's living up there, once again, you don't know how long this house, any house has sat vacant. You're also looking for any charred wood because sometimes houses can catch fire. You wanna look around chimneys and any kind of vents, oven vents or anything like that for any sort of charred wood. Now, another thing that gets overlooked is the sheetrock, the drywall, if you will. So what we see is we walk around the house, right? So you have to, when you're in the attic, pull back the insulation because when you're in the attic and you pull back the insulation, you'll see the backside of that drywall. And if it says made in China, you need to be aware because years ago, there was a hurricane that came through the state of Louisiana. It also came through Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. And there was building materials that were shipped from China. Houses were put back together. And unfortunately, it was contaminated drywall. Not only was it horrible for people's health, but it corroded the wires and the wiring, the electrical wiring in people's houses. But look, when it comes to termites, they could be the state bird down here in the south, especially the deep south, around the Gulf South, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi. But listen, my very first house that I sold in Nashville, Tennessee, that was 30 years ago. It had termites. So they're everywhere. The good news was in that situation, there was no damage. We treated the property, it was 450 bucks, and everybody was happy. Some people aren't so fortunate. I had one client, for example, she said, Wayne, I think there's a lot of wood rot underneath my house. Now, this was a raised house on a crawl space. I had a contractor go over and look at the property. He goes, Wayne, it's going to take about $6,000. This is termite damage. The moral of the story was we fixed the property. She sold it. The buyer was happy. But had we not really looked into that, we would have never known that it was termite damage. Now, sometimes a sign of termites is obvious. This house has been treated for termites. Here's the system right here. They basically make a hole into the ground, they put chemicals in there, that prevents the termites from being in the house. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. This house has had termites, as you can see, that's a little termite trail. So they can start in the attic, they can come out of the ground, those things fly, that's right, they have wings. So it's important to do your due diligence, have it inspected, look around for stuff like that. Now you also wanna look for stuff like this, I'll have to get low, that's a hole. Can you see that? That's a hole going underneath this front porch. More than likely there's a critter that has been or currently is living underneath the front porch. Now, it's not just there. There's an even bigger hole. And so one is probably living underneath the house. You just gotta get them out, that's no big deal. But if they're under there long enough, they can cause foundation issues. I'll tell you a quick story that happened to me. One time I walked outside, I stepped off my front porch, I'm standing on my front porch and I look down and my legs are covered in what appeared to be black pepper. Well, it wasn't black pepper. I was covered in fleas. I had an entire family of possums living under my front porch. Now look, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll hear me say, if you're gonna walk these properties, dress appropriately, wear blue jeans, cover up your feet, your legs. I just literally stepped on this. That was in my shoe, but luckily I have on boots. So that's what I mean. You don't want that in your foot. Now on a scale of one to 10, this house to me, it's a, it's a seven, eight all day long. It's got a lot of good features to it. It's on a big lot. It's an all brick house in a, in a very nice prestigious neighborhood. You can look around and see, it's just large lots, nice neighborhood. You just wanna do your homework, that's all. You wanna look for any kind of cracks and bricks. You wanna look for step cracks. Like see this right here? That's a crack in the brick. And chances are that happened years ago. And chances are it may have happened because of a tree or settlement in the foundation. Now, a lot of people will look at that and go, oh, geez, I'm not buying that house. That's an issue. Well, you have to know and keep in mind that you can fix that. But even if you're okay with this house and you buy this house, the next buyer that comes along, it may be three, five, 10 years down the road, they're gonna question, is there anything wrong with that? Now, typically what we say is it's okay to have step cracks, but when you have cracks in the bricks, that's something that's a little bit more concerning. You just have to have it checked out and verified by a structural engineer and make sure that no more movement, no more settlement, and they can look at that and tell you how long it's been since that's actually happened. 
So this is what I mean by trees. I always tell people to look around the house because trees that are planted close to a house will actually move the foundation. When it's hot and dry, the tree roots need water and they will physically move the foundation of a house. So I'm gonna show you something. That's the crack I was just referring to, right? So I'm walking around and I wanna to look to see is there anything that could have caused that? Well, it just so happens there's this massive root. There's this massive stump. That's a stump. There was a tree at one time right here. Now, not only was it right there, and of course there's the crack in the brick, but also when you see sparse limbs like this growing, chances are there was a big tree right here as well. And that's why I always tell people, don't plant any sort of trees. They seem small, they're gonna get big, keep them away from your house. Trees will move your home. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, I talk about land, I talk about well and septic systems, and houses have septic systems and wells too, already built. So, of course, buying land, you wanna put those in, but if a house already has a pre-existing system, you wanna have this inspected. You can have it inspected by a well pump company. Once the utilities, electricity is on, this thing will hold typically 60 to 70 pounds per square inch PSI. It will put water in that tank and it will hold water in that tank, pressurized, so when you turn on the faucet in the house, it just comes straight out of the faucet. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, Wayne, I don't want anything to do with a well or a septic system. Personally, I'd rather have a well and a septic system. You don't have a sewer bill or water bill. However, you have to maintain and service your well system and your septic system. Now, your septic system, they'll typically last for 30 years. You just have to get those things pumped out about every two to three years. And the, the parish and the county that you live in are usually pretty good at that. Now, the way this works is it's an aeration system and that aeration system puts air into the actual septic tank itself. So you gotta have electricity that's why I say turn the utilities on, but once this is fired up and running, they tell you, hey, it's good to go. It pushes air into the tank. The tank pushes everything out into the fill lines, but the county or parish will know if it's been pumped in the last two to three years. They'll give you a thumbs up if it's good to go. If not, they're gonna request that you have that system pumped. Now, here's what they do. Here's how they keep the handcuffs on you, so to speak. In most places, they will not allow you to have the utilities turned on on the property if that septic system hasn't been pumped. And that's why it's important to get a variance, a little week or two of the utilities being turned on. And you have to let them know that you're just turning the utilities on because you wanna do an inspection on the property. Now, when it comes to buying foreclosures, you have to know that mortgage companies, whether you're getting an FHA or a conventional loan, they're going to have the property appraised. They're not gonna have it inspected. Believe it or not, mortgage companies don't require you to inspect the property. You have to do that yourself, which I think is kind of crazy when you think about it, considering all the money that they loan you, but they do have it appraised. So you have to pay for the appraisal, typically that's $400. But if the appraiser comes out and says, there's no stove in the house, well, you can't get an FHA loan. You can't get a USDA loan. So those are the things that you need to know. You have to know what is the condition of that property? What will pass and what won't pass? Because oftentimes, if there's no flooring, there's no central heat and air, there's no appliances in the property, you can't get a loan for a foreclosure. And look, the same goes for VA. If you're a veteran, you're looking to purchase a property with a Veterans Administration loan, you can't get a loan on a house if it's in dire need of repairs. And the last thing you'll want to do is spend money on a house that's not yours yet. And furthermore, banks won't let you do any work to a house that's not yours yet. Now you've heard me say this in my videos, when it comes to land, always get a survey, or at the very least, look at the survey from a previous owner survey. Don't just go off something that's really old because you just never know when somebody is encroaching upon the property. You wanna make sure you get that taken care of before you purchase that property. Like for example, this property here has a very old fence. This fence has probably been here for a really long time. So you wanna make sure that this is actually on the property line. You'll also wanna make sure there's no storage buildings or anything like that that's encroaching upon the property because most importantly, you'll wanna get that taken care of before you take ownership of the house. But just know you'll have time to do that inspection. Buying foreclosures can be a lot of fun. If you need help in doing so, you can go to contactwayne.com. We can connect you with an agent regardless of where you are around the country. There's also foreclosed land. Now, foreclosed land and foreclosed houses, they're a little bit more specific search when it comes to finding these properties. That's why we say we can help you find one. And listen, they're a lot of fun. There's no time like the present to actually learn this stuff, to do hands-on work. There's lots of YouTube videos. You can learn just about anything out there, right? But most importantly, 
take your time, don't get stressed, and don't get so emotionally attached to the property. Look at the numbers, crunch the numbers. Remember what I said, you make your money when you buy.